So for drawing those shapes and opening such holes, I just want to be sure about my unit system. That's why from the customized unit setup, I am I do see that it is still in centimeters. Okay? And I want to draw an eventual picture which is about uh, a house. That's why I'm going to set my scaling about that. But uh, before drawing the house, I'm just going to draw several sets of different shapes. Uh, but I will use the same gridding system. So I'm just going to set the home grid to have the 25 centimeters. And I want to see the major line in after every four boxes means that after every one meter I will see a, a major line. And uh, I may have in here 16 boxes in every direction. So that means that four meters in every direction, X, Y, and Z. Okay? So I increase the viewports by Alt W. Now I'm just going to start by drawing some square shape holes at the beginning okay square or rectangle no matter then I will just go for uh, some other sort of holes let's say like uh, uh, by circulars then I will just go for some smooth cuts and the holes in the type of a text okay I'm starting by drawing a box okay here's the box what I draw okay so I'm just going to punch some holes in here. If I have this box and I'm just going to check the parameters in here, I'm able to change the length, let's say that 150 centimeters, the width is 150 centimeters, and the height is let's say 30 centimeters, okay? Let me set the height as 90 centimeters, so I, I, I will make in two different ways of opening the holes. What I will do first is going to use this length, width and the height segments, which can be defined uh, in the beginning of the application. Okay, so I divide in here height and the width. I'm just going to divide some more in here. Here are the boxes I draw, okay? But these boxes are uh, evenly drawn, okay, uh, on my object. And if I want to open a hole in here, I must select that box which is inside in here, a, a type of area. And we call those areas as polygons. But now I am not able to access that polygon. So what to do is I must convert my shape into editable poly. After I change my shape into editable poly, here I have the polygon section and I can select in here and I can select, sorry, I can select the lower part by control click. Now I select the boat and after I select them both, I can just simply hit the delete key and now I have the hole in here and this hole is actually a square type hole that is very easy to draw okay uh, I want to show you that here I have the hole but as you see that between those two holes there is nothing okay if you want to close this gap we have a section in here called border so I select this border and with the control select I select this border too now both of the borders are selected after I select them, I can just click the bridge and here I close it. Okay, so that is a proper hole in here. Okay, but the point is if we don't want to open a hole uh, in these sizes, we want to open the hole in any other size we prefer to do. So I'm just going to look from the left looking angle and I'm just going to zoom in. Here I want to draw a hole up in here, middle in here and down in here. So I can do for different ways. First, I'm just going to open, select the edge. Edge is the line between two vertexes. Okay, I select this edge and with control select I select this edge as well. After I select them, sorry, control Z, 
Okay, after I select them both, either you can make a right click and select in here connect or you can find the connect down in here connect I want to click the settings if you click the settings window it asks you that how many connections you want you can increase or decrease in default it is one here it is I select one connection in here and I'm just going to scroll it up and I'm just going to connect these two lines for one more time this time from here okay I can just scroll it down in here and then I can just simply click the polygon and delete it so here I punch another hole in here okay so you can able to build holes like these two ways but as you can see from these holes those holes are uh, a straight hole uh, usually a type of rectangle or square I'm now going to show you two different hole making patterns one is a type of a compound body other is about having several steps I'm just going to show you first of all the length away okay they both have advantages and disadvantages I'm just going to show you the firstly the the length away and here I just delete the box okay and let me just go for the perspective look and let me draw the box for one more time this box what I'm going to draw now here it is is going to have more segments how more you make the segments that circular shape you will have okay so oops it's clicked okay that's unexpected okay six oh, come on six okay so I'm able to look the shape from the top looking view now from the top looking view I'm going to select those polygons which are in the center okay so I just again convert the shape into editable poly after I convert it into editable poly I'm just going to select these um, actually boxes and I want a proper hole that's why I must be sure that either the lower portion has that selection to it hasn't been selected so I'm going to select them as well there is a better way to select objects an easier way oops selecting those objects I will just show you those stuffs later on okay I select them all by control click now the both ends are selected after the both ends are selected I'm just going to right click and actually it has moved a little bit that's not good okay whatever let's be like that so I right click and I select here inset next to the inset there is a setting window I just click that one and I can just set the inset according to group you can make it even by polygon that's an option but that's not the thing what I want I want it to be having a set as group okay so after I draw this I click OK now I'm going to use the collapse collapse makes all the vertexes come together on one vertex which is at the center okay now I just click again on it by right click and I'm going to select the collapse okay after it has been collapsed I'm just going to look from the down to so here it is it is also collapsed down in here I'm looking from the top view now I select the vertexes and I select only this vertex which is in the center okay because I just select by uh, click and drag it also selects the vertex which is down in here if you can see it is red in color okay so what I will do now is I'm going to apply a chamfer chamfer 
is a type of tool which divides the vertex into uh, vertexes which grows through the edges. Now you will see what I, you will understand what I draw. I am just going to select the chamfer. Once I click the chamfer, I'm just going to increase it. And you see that that one vertex is now growing towards the other edges. Okay? So once I'm happy with it, I click OK. And now I'm just going to select the polygon tool. I select this inner polygon oops, with the lower polygon. Okay, by control select, I just simply delete them. And here I have the hole, but same as before, the hole has no borders in here. So what I will do is the same. I will just select the border, I select this object, and I select this, oops, I select this border by control select this border. After I select them both, I am just going to click in here the bridge and it closes. It. Okay, so finally what I have is a circular hole. If you are not so happy about the circle shape, it, it is not like a circle actually, we can apply some modifiers. The modifier what I want to show you now is the turbo smooth. Turbo smooth. Once you make the turbo smooth, that makes every corner to become smoother. And if you look at the circle now, it is like a good circle now. Okay? Clear? So this is the length away. This was the length away. I'm just going to show you from the now the easy way. So I show you how to open a hole by using the polygons and side stops. I show you how to open the holes by using the work inset, uh, collapse, and chamfer method. Now I'm going to show you the third method, which is a compound body. Okay, I'm just going to delete this shape one more time. And now I'm just going to draw another shape. It's again a box actually. Perspective. Okay, I'm just going to draw a box now in here. Okay, this is a good box. And I'm just going to align the length. Okay, the length. Okay, length will be just 220. And the width will be 300. And the height, let it be 20. Okay? Now, I do not care how many segments it has now. Because the method what I'm going to do is something else. Uh, okay, let me just show you something good. I'm just going to make in here 200, 200 by 200. So it is a cube, okay? It's a cube now in here. So let me just draw a sphere, okay? A sphere. This sphere is going to have slightly larger the size of the cube. So I'm going to select this and the radius is okay 120. If I say it 120 so the diameter become 240 means that it is slightly larger than the cube. Then what I will do is I will just align it. So here I drag, I align my sphere to the box. Okay, so here it is. I'm just going to scroll it up. Okay, so I have a cube and that cube has the box inside. Sorry, I have a cube and that cube has a sphere inside. Okay, I'm just going to set it in proper. It is 100. Not 100, okay. Uh, 120, okay, 100 is good. So that's good. So what I will do now is I'm just scrolling down, uh, zooming in. And now I'm just going to select the crate, the geometry section, not standard parameters the compound objects. Inside this compound objects, and now I select the sphere. After I select the sphere, 
the boolean get available. Once the boolean is available, I click the boolean. Okay. When I click the boolean, I have a new set of settings came in here. Okay, I'm just going to select the pick operand B. And I'm going to select the box. Once I made it, okay, the box hasn't been selected. It actually now cuts my sphere according to the sizes or dimensions of the box. But that is not the thing what I'm looking for. I want box to be cut according to the sphere. So what I will do is, I will just scroll down in here and I will just reverse the subtraction. It's making now A minus B. I will say that B minus A. So now, if you look at the shape, what we have drawn, we have a, actually a cube which has a sphere hole cut inside it. They got it? So by this way, you are able to generate a really different type of cuts. I'm just going to show you one more cut, then one more cut example about the boolean. Then we will start throwing the house. Okay, I select the sphere now and I delete it. I'm just going to create uh, one more box. Okay, and I'm just going to click the sorry um, here the geometry section, the text. And inside this text, I'm able to write anything in here. For example, I'm just going to write in here Ishik. Okay? And I can set different values, uh, the type of the text and such things. Okay, I'm just going to use now for this one, okay, MS Gothic. Okay? I can set other parameters in here, but that's okay for me now. Once I, I'm happy about it, I just click it and it generates the word in that manner and then I'm just going to okay uh, where is the scroll here it is okay I'm just going to bring it to the side the point of using the boolean is uh, the text uh, sorry the object must be over of the both ends. I mean the beginning and the endings should be greater than the place whatever you are cutting. But here the shik word is just a single line. Okay, so let me just make that word to be ticker. I click the modifiers and I just write the extrude. Once I made the extrude, now it's ready, but the amount is zero centimeter still not so good I'm just increasing it okay now that text became an, uh, a type of object now okay and what I will do now is I'll just drag it on the box but as you see that the I and the K are overlapping so I'm just going to reduce the size here it is okay and I must be sure, as I told you before, that the, the word ishik must come out from the both ends. So I just click the text and I'm just sending it. Oops, not the contract. Okay, I'm just sending it down. So if you look at in here, the both sides, the ishik is out now. So after this step is cleared, I'm now going for the create geometry compound objects boolean and then I'm just going to put, pick the operand B once I pick the operand B now as you see that I have a box and inside the box the word Ishik has been punched out so I have a hole in the name of Ishik so these are three different ways of opening the holes Okay, we are going to use only polygon editing mode for drawing a house. So up until now, do anybody has any question? Clear? Okay, I'm going to start drawing a, of the house and uh, after almost 10 to 15 minutes, we may give a break. 
uh, or according to your will, we can just make a double period as well. Okay, so we will void it after that period of time. So let's. Okay, that's over. So let me just play the shape. And now we will start drawing a house. Okay, so what I'm going to draw is actually a house. That's why I'm going to start from a single box. Okay, let me select the box. According to this box, I do not want to see any segments. I want to see only one segment in every direction. So here is one and one. And I want this house to have the dimensions as, let's say, the length of the house is 400 centimeters. The width of the house is, let's say, 500 centimeters. And the height of the house is, let's say, that 250 centimeters, okay? These are the dimensions of my house. Now, let us draw the stuff on it. But the aim of this uh, lesson is about polygon editing. That's why I must change my box into the polygon. I right-click on the box and I just convert it into editable poly. Now, after I convert it into editable poly, I'm not able to change any other issues, let's say like the height, width or such issues. But you can even make it possible by selecting a polygon, for example, this polygon, I select it. And if I just drag it out, I'm able to change it as well. Okay? But not precisely by writing numbers. It, it is something about the making calculations related to these issues. Okay, so I'm just going to make it a bit larger in this dimension. Okay, so that's all. I'm just going to place it into zero, zero, zero positions. Now, we are going to start drawing the shape from the roof. Okay, so while we are drawing the roof on the house, I'm going to start from the edge. I pick this edge, okay, and I, okay, that's bad. That's the problem of the mouse while I'm recording the video, it usually does it. And I select the both edges. After I select the both edges, I right click on them and I select, I right click on them and I, ah. It is going and making itself, not me. So nice. Okay, I'm going to select from here. I'm just going to select in here connect. Okay. So if I make the connection, so between those two edges, I have drawn one more edge. While this edge is already drawn, I'm just going to see from the left look, and I will just lift it up. Okay, so now the house shape is starting to appear somehow. After I draw this part now, I must make some sort of connections for making the uh, roof more solid. Because here, if you look at it, the roof and the base of the house are looks almost the same body actually they are the same body same polygon so what i'm going to do i'm just going to pass the perspective look and i'm just going to select the vertexes now in this vertex mode you can either select one by one like this or you can just go for the left look and you can just select them okay once you make like that that automatically selects the other ends too, okay? Here I want to select the other ends as well, that's why that's the way I'm going to make. After I select them, again I'm just going to go down, 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 down here. What is that? Okay, 
uh, here it is connect I'm just going to connect that so what I have in here actually now yeah I connect the vertexes okay now after I connect the vertexes the roof has been separated from the base of the house I want to elevate the roof a little bit up so from the left look I select the polygon and I select these old polygons but what has been selected I, it's better to check it out it selects only the roof which is at the top and I'm just looking from the left look in here I want to elevate it so I'm just going to make it by extrude I right click on the uh, roof and here in the extrude I'm just going to select the settings when I click the settings I am able to elevate it any way I want okay so I'm just going to elevate it up to let's say 30 centimeters okay that's the thing what I want to see now uh, actually according to this sort of roof when the rain falls that just go from the wall side I, I must make a type of shelter to the sides so what I will do is I will just pass the polygon mode from the polygon mode I'm just going to scroll sides I will select the site and while the site is selected I'm holding the control key from the keyboard and I select this one too so now the boats are selected but again the mouse move it okay if the house looks like a house after earthquake that means that that's something mouse done something without I uh, actually intended to do okay so here the boat ends are selected and while these boats are selected I again right click on it and I again click I can if I can now it's Okay, I right click on it and I'm just going to select the extrudes. Come on. Okay, I'm just going down and I will just click from here. Extrude. So when I click the extrude in here, it keeps my previous settings. My previous settings was 30 centimeter. That's why it extrudes by 30 centimeter to the sides. Okay. While this is done, I'm just going to see from the left look. Now the both of the polygons which are at the side are selected. If I just click them and move them down, okay. So that looks more like a shelter of the house. Okay. So now I have the house is almost done we are just going to add some more new features okay now I want to deal with the different parts of a house in different way, manners so that's why I'm going to separate the roof from the base of the house okay so what I will do is we had used before the attach while we were drawing the DNA do you remember we were drawing two spheres and a cylinder in between and we were attaching them now we are going to detach means we are going to break the connections between two structures what I will do is I'm just going to look at from the left look I'm just going to select the, these polygons and I'm clicking the control key and I'm selecting these polygons and then still the control key is selected pressed and I select this polygon so it selects all the parts belongs to roof okay after I am sure that I select the roof well I do right click and after I do right click here attaches here I'm just going to look for detach so I'm just going to look for here I, I, I think that it's there okay I'm just going to so, scroll down here detach okay I just click the detach so once I detach it it's asking me that what is the name of that new object I'm just going to write in here roof okay 
And do you want to detach as an element or as a clone? I'm not selecting the other ones. I just want to detach as a new object. So I click as the roof. So here as you see that, now in here, I have roof and I have box. And I'm just going to change the name of the box as the base. Okay? So if I close the base, I can just edit the roof. If I close the roof, I can just edit the base. Okay? Actually, what I want to do is just editing the base. Now, I'm going to see from the front look. Uh, you can make it by group as well, but uh, the, the behaviors of group is something else. Okay? Here, I want them to stay as one body. Okay? In the group, you can just uh, treat them in different ways. Here, I, I, I want them to be together. Okay? The group is actually, if you separate it by elements, that time they will be in the same object but two different elements like the group is okay now what I'm going to do is like, actually I'm going to open two holes one hole for the door and one hole for the window okay so let us open the holes I select this object now I'm just uh, zooming in okay and I know that these boxes are almost uh, 25 centimeters so I'm just going to uh, select this edge and this edge I'm just selecting these two edges by control click okay after I select these two edges I'm just going to connect them Okay, I'm just going to connect them. But now, while I'm connecting, I'm just going to connect them by settings. Okay, and I want to connect them by two parts. Okay, that is all optional. That is what I'm preferring to do by now. Okay, uh, after I select these, this edge, sorry, this edge, I'm just scrolling it up. And I'm selecting this edge and I'm, I'm scrolling this one up too. Okay, so here it is. And actually, that's so high. I'm oops, I just want to scroll it down in here. Okay, then I'm just going to make one more connection here, here, and here. I select now three edges. I select now three edges and I'm and I'm going to connect by three because of a reason okay um, three is okay but even the one is okay two is okay too no I like three okay that that's going to be three so after these are selected now I'm just going to select this one with this one together I'm scrolling it down to the side okay and I'm just going to select this one with this one and I'm scrolling it to the side so here is going to be the hole for the door okay and I'm just going to select this one I hope we won't have a different type of a house because of the mouse and I'm just going to open in here one more connection in here no more three connection I want only one connection that's okay so here I'm just going to open the holes so I select the polygon I select this polygon this polygon ah and this polygon. While these three polygons are selected, I just play them. Okay? So what I have now, I have a hole for the door and a hole for a window. Okay? Okay, now I'm just going to make another hole for the side windows. Okay? For the side windows. So what I will do, I just select this polygon and this polygon, I select the both polygons 
Okay? I select the both polygons by control select. Okay? While these polygons are selected, I'm just going to use the inset. I'm just going to use the inset. Okay, I'm scrolling down. Here the inset. And I'm insetting the shape. Okay. That is actually because of I have here two edges. That that's the problem. Okay, let me just check this out. Okay, I'm just going to make here the point is look inset is working depends on the vertexes okay and if you select the vertex mode here I have one here I have two vertex two three four vertexes in here okay in this side I have four vertexes but in this side I have only two vertexes it doesn't actually uh, suites in this way. You can either wheel these vertexes, means that the, the, you can either make them uh, behave as one, or I'm just going to use another way in here. I'm just going to show you that. That's the way what how we draw the shapes. Yeah, another connection. I'm just going to select this edge, and I'm going to select this edge. After these two edges are selected, I'm going to select also these edges because I want it to have a symmetrical look. Okay. Now after these four after these four edges are selected, I'm just going to scroll down in here and I will just click the connect. And it's I want only one connection. I want only one connection, that's okay. From the top look, okay, let me see from here. From the top look, I'm just going to scroll it to the side. Okay? Now, I have actually inside polygons, which are having the two edges in the both sides. So now, after I select these two, I can just simply go down in here and I can just select the inset and when I scroll it lower now I have not I do not have that problem what I had before okay now I'm just going to see from the left okay I just scroll it down in here uh, let's say that's okay I'm just moving it up I can just scale it in any way here it is so here it is. Okay, this is the hole what I'm planning to open for the both sides of the house. So after I am okay with these holes, I'm just going to select them and delete them. So now I have the house from the perspective look. I have the house which has two holes at the sides, actually one hole at the, one hole at the sides, one hole at the front and one hole for the door. Okay, so I'm not going to put the windows for the side sides, I'm just going to put the window and the doors for the front and we are going to put the chimney on the top of the roof. Will, do you want to make a break or continue? Continue? Okay. So now I'm just going to see from the last from the front look. Now this is the front look view. I want to put here a door and here a window. Okay. So let us put those stuffs. Drawing of a door and the window is actually um, not that straightforward action in the first try. I'm going to try it like this. For example, I'm just going to create. Uh, not the standard parameters, I'm just going to go down for the doors and I'm just going to select the pivot door I select the pivot door and now I'm just going to draw that pivot door here and here and here okay that doesn't look like a door but it is actually okay what I will do now is I will just make the base to disappear 
I just need to find what is the structure of this door is looks like. For understanding it better, I'm just coming to modify section. From the modify section, I'm opening the door a little bit. Ah, so here is the place where the door opens. So I can now edit the thickness, heights, and the such other values. So for here, I do not need that depth. Okay? And the height and the length will change accordingly my health. So I'm just going to, sorry, from the perspective look, I'm just going to show the base now. And now I will just position the door to its position. Okay? So I'm just going to look from the front look. Okay, that's obvious that my door is something huge. I'm just going to reduce the height. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to reduce the width too. But here I'm not able to see what's happening behind. That's why if I click the F3, I can see the wire framing. So at the wire framing mode, I can see what is happening actually. F3, F3. So I'm just changing the width in here and the height in here. That is quite okay for my needs. Okay, I'm back by F3, but I am not sure that I place it well. So I must see from the top look, and here is the door, and here is the house. It's not being placed well, so I must select it and I must drag it to the door, to here, okay? So let me see from the perspective, look now. Here's the door placed at the place. But the door is opening inside. I, I want it to be open outside. Okay, we have another problem. I select the door and I select to flip the swing. Come on. So it opens through outside. If you don't want the door to be open that way, you can even change the hinge. So you can just open it that direction. Okay? So that's a good door and I like it now. I'm just going to put now window. Only one window. I'm just going to put only one window for here. At home, if you would like to put the windows to the sides, uh, you, you are most welcome. You can just put them in. Okay, I'm just going to make the same process for the window too. I'm just going to click the crates and the windows. Here we have different type of windows. Um, I'm going to use the evening window. Okay, um, the, these sort of windows, if I'm not mistaken, opens like this. Okay. And then it's not the pivot window, it's not opening and closing like this, it opens like this way. They, they, have, they are being used usually for the exhaust fans or some, some other such structures. Okay, I'm going to draw an evening window again, here it is, and here, okay, let me just use the snapping tool, that will be better for me to draw. Okay, I click in here, click in here, and click in here. Sorry, not you. I couldn't draw. Okay, I will draw. Don't worry. Okay, here I have drawn it. Here, here. Okay, let it be something like that. Not surprising, uh, not, not expected, but that is the drawing. Okay, so let us modify it. I'm just going to, of course, increase the height a little bit, I guess. Okay, I do increase the height. Now I'm just going to check what sort of window is this. So let me open it and that will give me a mind about what sort of window I'm dealing with. I do scroll down and here's the opening. I click to open. Alright, it, it is something not like a window, but that's a window. I'm going to increase or decrease some values. I'm just going to decrease the depth. Hold on, now, now it looks like a window. And I want to increase the number of panels. Okay, I'm just going to increase the number of panels. Okay, 
and here is the opening and closings. That's okay. All right. So let me position it to the place. I'm again looking from the front look, and uh, the, the window what I draw is a little bit big. Okay. So I'm just going to turn the F3 again on. So I'm just seeing the wire framings. According to the wire framings, F3. F3, okay? I'm just going to position it somewhere here. That's okay. And then I'm just going to reduce the sides. Here is the one. And here is the second. Okay, I'm just going to check it out. Now uh, it should be reduced a little bit more. Come on. Okay. Almost. I, I'm not drawing an architectural drawing. Okay. And not surprisingly, it is in front of my house. I do see from the top. And let me just drag it to the home inside the home like this. Okay. So that's all. Perspective look. And here is the house. Let's see. Uh, let us. Oops. Let us close the window a little bit. Okay, uh, that is unexpected. Okay, let me reduce the depth. And okay, let it be like that. You are able to change every parameters in here. I'm just going to reduce the size into two and that is something awkward okay it is growing out that's good okay whatever let it be like that some of the parameters what I touch make it this uh, let's say uh, broken a little bit we have a mutant uh, window now okay now what I want to show you is if you look at the wall, guys, listen here. I'm going to show you one another parameters now. If you look at the wall now, I'm just zooming in. The wall what we have drawn is having no thickness at all. That is not usual. Actually, the walls should be having a thickness. Okay, and whatever you draw in here is just the thin like a paper. So to apply a thickness for your object, you just need to use a modifier which is called as shell. While the box is selected, I'm just selecting the modifier list and I just do select the shell. When I select the shell, it's asking me that how far the shell will affect the outside how far it affects the inside. So if you look at the walls now, now the walls got the thickness. Do you understand it? So the shell, if, if I disable the shell, if I disable the shell, there is no thickness. Look at in here. There is no thickness. But once you apply the shell, now it became like a wall. Do you got this? So we have drawn the base of the house, that's, that's quite good enough. I'm just going to deal with the roof now, okay? I'm just going to click this uh, object off and I'm just turning the roof on. Okay, for the roof, I'm just going to draw a chimney and then it will be over. Then it will be over. You know what the chimney is, by the way? Yeah. Chimney is the place where the smoke goes out. Okay. So, uh, according to the, my house drawing, uh, I want the chimney is actually we have a problem because of mood vertexes and such stuffs. Now the house actually grow larger. Because of the shell effects, it alter. If I reduce the outer amount, 
it will just go in okay I can just make the shell to the inside and the outsides will be still in the sharp cut okay but I will just make only the inside uh, what we say the shell okay let me put the other stuff what we already have okay the door is hitting the roof but whatever uh, that's a sort of architectural problem where we do not deal about them okay so if, if you want that door to to get lower you need to move the polygons lower and you need to uh, align the door accordingly but we are not having the architecture lesson in here so what I will do now is I'm just going to put a chimney on the top and I want to put that chimney at here okay so I'm just looking from the top okay <coughs> from the roof from the roof I select these two edges the first edge is this and the second edge is this and I do connect them as we connect the stuffs before okay and I do brought it in here and then while this is selected I select this one too and I connect for one more time okay now the point actually I'm just going to show you is it has the constraints as none if I'm dragging it in here you see that it squeezes my house that is a problem what I want is I want that line to go up related to the edges with the sides so I click in here edge and now I select it and scroll it see now it is going up on the edge clear so I draw it in here up in here that's good after I draw in here I'm just going to select this polygon after I select this polygon now I'm just going to make the chimney so I'm just going to make it extrude okay but now the extrude level will be a little bit more uh, what I see in here is actually the chimney is going to the side that that's not the thing what I want actually so I'm just going to see from the left no I'm just going to see from the right look <coughs> okay <coughs> what I will do now is I will just select those vertexes at here and I will just move them sorry it's again in the constraints I should make it none now and I need to drag it in here and I must take this one and I must drag it in somewhere here and I'm just going to push it up that's okay so if I just check it out that is almost okay I'm just going to make few more steps I'm just going to select this polygon and I will make one more extrude if I can ah. okay I, I will just go from here it's outline is active okay I'm just going to extrude now not that much I'm just going to extrude a little bit okay and then I'm just going to select these vertexes the vertex which is at the right and the left and right and the left okay okay after I select them I'm going to extrude one more time no, not like that okay I'm just going to that was the mistake of mine you should select only one axis extrudes on the one for once okay extrude it grows to the sides that's a good amount I'm going to select here one come on two three four five and six I guess again it moved but I don't care it anymore 
I extruded. Here it is. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to make this part a little bit smaller and go inner. Okay, so I'm just going to make it inset. Okay, here it is. And I'm just going to push it down. If I push it down, as you see that it is making the sides uh, to be, let's say, a little bit moved through in or out. But that's not the thing what I want. I want a sharp go in. If you want to make a sharp go in, you need to select the bevel. I select the bevel now and I'm just going to increase it and I will just decrease this value. Look, you can just manage it in here. If you just make it in here zero, so that will be in the same size without having any sort of greater or let's say uh, increase or decrease amount. And I'm just going to push it in here down. Okay. So here's the pipe goes in. Okay, that's good. And if I want to see a hole in here, I can just simply delete it. So here it is, what we have. So far so good. So this is the house what we have drawn in this lecture. So I'm going to save this recording and I will just post it to Dropbox and I wish you to check and try it at home. On tomorrow we will just make the practice about 